What's up, BDS crew? I am back in town, back on the job. I am at my first client of the day and um, up in this kind of garage loft area. Their uh, dog had gotten in here and left some quite a bit of spots, so what I'm gonna be doing is vacuuming first, and then after that, I'm gonna be treating all the stains, which some of them are visual, and I'll show you here in a second. All right, so that one obviously isn't pet, but we got pet urine, pet urine, pet urine, spot, spot, some back there, running right where the blue is on. And then there's a little bit over here in that area. Um, there it was. Small one right here. That's just discoloration. Or actually, no way. That's light shining through. But there's quite a bit of big ones here. And this main walk path leading to the stairs. As you can see, it's pretty much this entire section. And right there. And then at the bottom of the stairs where my steam line is resting, that one first step there has a spot and then one right up above it has stains. So like I said, I'm gonna pre-vac this to get the dry soil out and then I'm gonna be treating this carpet with uh, Unchained to break down the urine molecules and then after some dwell time, I'm actually gonna, while I'm doing the dwell time, there's a, a hallway and a little traffic area inside the house that I'm gonna take care of while this dwells. That way it has plenty of time to break it down so when I come back to rinse it out, I'll have better chances of getting it completely out of the carpet. And you can see there's a couple right there. One that was directly next to the leg of this couch. Um, so that's what I'm doing so I have plenty of time for it to sit and do its job before I extract it out and that way I can keep moving. So this is, this is where we're starting. So let's get started with the vacuuming. So I already did a little bit of this walk path before I started the video. open section here where the ottoman was because there's actually some, some pet urine stains in there too. And then I'm just doing the rest of it, the open areas. run out of cord right near the end. Let's um, part plug it in over in this open spot.
like I said, I'm just doing majority of the open areas where it's been trafficked on. That's all they requested. So everything has been pre-moved. I helped her move a portion of the couch to get where that big red spot there is. She said it's been there for quite a while. So let's see what we could do to get it out and or make it look better. hallway in this other small section. So this carpet I have cleaned before. But that upstairs carpet is a first. It's never been cleaned um, from what she told me. So I'm going to put in a little extra in that one. Outlet to get all the areas I need to get. So I'm not doing this whole room, just this main outside perimeter. It's just this walk path was hit with a couple small spots from the dog, nothing major. So I treated it with some unchained in the spots. They're very small in comparison to the ones upstairs in that garage loft.
four more feet, you run out of line here. a light brown coming through my sight glass there. Just to be safe, I'm kind of doing double passes, or I should say quad passes, because one up, one down, and then coming back and doing my back pass.
that's what we got so far. All right, guys, I'm back upstairs in this, uh, what I'm just calling a garage loft. Um, it's our kid's bedroom, so I just see our bead. And I don't know if you remember from the beginning of the video, there was a spot there. Uh, that's going to come right out. It has completely disappeared. Um, so I'm excited about that because that's the one spot the client didn't think was going to come out. Got a little bit of kick out right there. Nothing major. Um, their dog that basically peed all over this main area is a non-shedding breed. So that's a positive. Uh, but I just felt like CRB in this just to kind of give it a little extra scrub. It doesn't really probably need it so much as the uh, pre-spray will do all the work. It's, it's, that's its job is to suspend the soil so that way I can extract it out. So I actually retreated this whole room and obviously the open areas where I hadn't touched because first thing I did is I came in here with my black light and treated the pet spots so you could tell this one that was here wasn't a pet spot because it doesn't light up at all and uh, remember this area having pet spots is that a spot no okay that's just the way the carpet's sitting so see there's still a little bit there so this is why I let it dwell quite a long time um, you're going to see this under a black light even after a professional cleaning, but there was a big spot right here. I can't remember if I showed it, but it's not even appearing under the black light. And actually what this is, is kick out. Um, see, look at that. Okay, so that's not even a spot. That's just the stuff that kicked out of the carpet from the CRB. So um, TMF's Unchained product I sprayed it under really good, like I said, and it to the point where pretty much all spots have even disappeared under a black light, which doesn't always happen. So that's a good sign that it's ready to be extracted and it's been broken down on a molecular level. So just wanted to show you guys that. And then of course I have these stairs to do, um, but yeah, just finished doing the CRB. Now it's time to rinse. You can see that reddish spot completely came out. Client's gonna love that. 
I've already done the main open areas. I just got left this walk path and then clean out the stairs. But as you guys can see, it's cleaning up well. Not much of a color difference being that it's a kind of a dark green, so it's hard to see see it, but I mean based off where that red reddish spot was and a couple other spots, it's peeling up really well. I'm not getting any more hardly uh, yellow coming through my sight glass there, which is great. It means I got most of it out already. And it's just a little lingering at the top. So we're doing good. Alright, did a little extra vacuum right there because right there and right about there were some bad pet spots so I wanted to extract it a little harder considering I treated it a little more than typically you would with a normal cleaning. Alright, going to keep moving along, go from there. Alright, last step, breaking the carpet out back in the house. did not scotch guard this carpet but because the nap is so thick and I always actually rake their carpet out Just wanted to make it uniform again and then plus I had somebody request part of the video being raking so here you go now this carpet I'm fine pushing forward and backwards, but that loft carpet, only backwards. Otherwise, I'll leave the lines in the carpet. That'll be noticeable. So, 
for it. I'm going to go back up here because that's where that light switch is. And the whole time I've been cleaning upstairs. Just about. I've had this, oops, this fan on to speed up their hall path because this leads to all their bedrooms. stepped on the back of my shoe cover here. Slipped it off. Alright, so same with this carpet. Uh, well, let's see. Well, this one isn't, isn't doing it, but I think the upstairs carpet may So now, for the most part, it's back to its normal state. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that blower running until I'm, until I'm completely done. And go from there. So I'll be up going upstairs. Alright, made my way upstairs. Time to finish raking this one out. Let's see if this carpet does it. Like I'm... Alright, I'm in luck. I'm not going to leave the lines in it like some of these carpets do. Usually, you just have to do backstrokes. But in this case, we're in the clear. So this carpet, I did put a post treatment on it, a citrus deodorizer. So in this case, I do really want to rake it because I'm more or less massaging it into the carpet to help give this, not just the room, a fresh smell, but the carpet itself. Since the pet hit it really hard, I always like to pre-treat it, you know, if it gets to a certain point, do the whole restoration and then cleaning of the room, and then if I catch any scent at all, I automatically post-treat it with the, the deodorizer, and then of course, 
rake the carpet if it's a residential carpet like at least like this if it's commercial and it doesn't leave footprints or clean lines or anything like that then you don't have to worry about it do the stairs here a little difficult to film and rake at the same time so thank you guys so much for watching appreciate you guys what's up BDS crew I am out at my second job just got here and uh, got some stuff kind of pre-prepped I already pre vacked since I showed that earlier in the day on the other video so let's go take a walk through all right Past my door here. So I'm doing this front room. They already moved some furniture. So you can see where the couch sat right there and how it's darker here. It's the first bedroom. This one's going to be a little bit of challenge I got something that's hardened into the carpet most likely probably gum master bedroom couple spots carpet's a little old uh, one hardened in spot right there And then two more bedrooms back here. You can see mainly dark spots. So there's like drink spills, water, stuff like that. And then just dirt got attracted to it. So I would imagine that pretty much everything is going to come out. But I'm looking forward to seeing the transition. So let's get this started. All right. So I am pre setting up my inline sprayer here. And. For this one, I'm going to be doing uh, BioPro 10K because there are some grease spots and I think some other types of stains and I didn't really get a complete lowdown on what is exactly in it. So I'm using BioPro 10K from Truck Mount Forums as the main thing, mainly because it has some citrus cleaner in it so this will help with this carpet and then over here Puro 2 as you can see odorant stain remover so this is a booster so I'm putting for this one because it's kind of in bad shape um, I'm boosting it with two scoops which is four ounces in those little scoops two per two ounces per scoop um, as you can see, it is a pH of 11, so it's an alkaline-based uh, cleaner. So what I'm going to be rinsing with um, is the opposite, an acidic cleaner. So this is going to help me neutralize the carpet and help bring the pH back down closer to a neutral pH, which is 7. So anytime you alter the carpet's pH, and it's left in that uh, in a high alkaline state you run the risk of having to uh, clean it sooner because it's going to attract soils a lot faster than it normally would so that's why I'm going to rinse it with uh, an acidic product to help bring it back down closer to that 7 pH so if you have a cleaner um, that doesn't do that, they're doing a, a little bit of a disservice to you. Because you got to make sure you neutralize the carpet as best as possible in order to get to back to where you're supposed to be. 
So, and as you guys saw in the walkthrough, this one's kind of bad. Um, has some questionable spots that I am not sure what they are. So, when you're cleaning a really bad one and you want to get it to pop, clean up well, colors look brighter. Um, what I'm adding here is just shy of a full scoop of Grout Master, which it says 3-in-1 tile and Grout Pre-Spray, but it is perfect to help with carpets that are in bad shape. If you look under the tips for carpets, add scoop 2 ounce to any pre-spray to boost for what they call rat nasty or you know one that's just heavily soiled, lots of traffic in it. Nothing wrong with that, um, but this is why I do walkthroughs and check everything out so that way I can mix my pre-treatment properly per job. So that's it for this section. Alright, so putting down the pre-spray that I just talked about. So there's just shy of 400 square feet of carpet. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-treat all of it. That way, by the time I get started, all of the rooms will have ample dwell time. See a little spot right here. Get a little extra. where everybody stood up and walked out, so that's why I went slower there. something there. Make sure I get a good covering under that table. So that spot directly to the right of the CRV that's hardened into it, I did put some pre-treatment on it, uh, some citrus face cleaner. So if the CRV didn't get it to loosen up, I was going to use another tool to break it up before I rinse it. So I'll show you that tool here shortly. bead for the most part okay so here you go this tool now it's from pros choice uh, I can't remember if they actually call it the carpet shark 
or that's just a carpet cleaner's name for it because it's got teeth on it here and you got to be careful if you're not doing it the way I do it rinsing it out and everything because you run the risk um, of any damaged carpet fibers if it's old you might pull one out so using this be gentle if you haven't done it before but as you can see the carpet's starting to soften back up and stand back up so the pre-spray has helped dissolve that stuff and now with this agitation carpet shark it's starting to stand back up so when I rinse it it should pop out so we have another one right there Again, you don't want to put too much pressure, so that's why I'm kind of going back and forth in a couple directions. Some stuff has came out of that one. So, you can still see the spots, but now I'm going to rinse them out once I get to that point, and those should pop right out. All right, guys, we got an actual gum spot here. So again, carpet shark to help break it up. And I already put something on it uh, a while ago. Apologize if the camera is a little shaky. But uh, you can see some of it broke off already. Sometimes you can just use heat if you got a lot of heat and you can get it out. Now remember, there's always a chance that one carpet filament will pop. If it's old carpet, it's gonna happen. I mean, you are breaking up something sticky. So you can see this one here It's starting to pop a little bit but you know if it's just one or two little ones it's not the end of the world so when I say if you buy one of these carpet sharks which you can uh, you can find them on johndon.com if you really want one so if this has happened to you and you want to try and get it out you can but just be careful that you don't push too hard because you'll potentially pull a lot of carpet fibers out and that's something you don't want to do obviously so just be gentle 
and it's just take your time it is depending on how big the gum piece is or slime you can easily spend five ten minutes just doing this trying to break it up and remember I did pre-treat it so look at that just about out completely so now I could probably rinse it and get that out we got one more right here so I'm gonna work on this one for a little bit and then I'm gonna rinse this room out see I got my wand here ready to rinse that out so here we go spot is gone. You can see the difference. Love it. Alright, down to the living room. Oh yes, thank you. You can just set it right down there, that's fine. Thank you, I appreciate that. Alright, so down to the living room here. Just got my setup out there, get the boss filter hooked up. So, this carpet is cleaning up very well. This area isn't bad, just because it's going to get locked right here. But once I get out into the open area of the room, it'll be a little bit different. So, this area doesn't need much TLC. a transition paper, so even though this is where this couch sat. Here, there was a stain. I have 
happy to say that the pre spray and CRB broke it up. And I know where it's at or where it was, but I can't see it anymore. So that's always a good sign. blending with the area where the couch is at. I'm going about three to six inches past my previous section. And the reason why I do that, or I made a habit of doing that, is because not every time you've probably seen me not let off the trigger. So like going like this, you know. So when I get up here, I go past a little bit and I do a dry. That way I pick up any loose moisture. Instead of just going right up to the previous line, you're potentially leaving a spot there a little wetter than normal. So when I do my dries, I go boom, past it. Past. Then you don't leave streaks, depending on your setup and your chemicals. Sometimes after dry time, that can show up. So always go past your previous lines with at least your drive. But I'd like to say this is coming out great. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down there. Give me a thumbs up. Appreciate the love. You guys are awesome. I'm going to get this going, finish this room up. All right, last step, raking. So, just got done scotch guarding. So, now, more or less, I'm massaging it into the carpet fibers or equally distributing it among the carpet fibers, however you want to say it. So I got this client through a referral and through YouTube, so thank you for that. I'll be throwing a little extra gift for her. Uh, from what I understand, the person that referred me is her birthday recently. So I'm going to give her a, a referral card as a thank you, which gives her a little bit of money off her next service. And I normally give out 8 ounce um, spotters to new clients, and I didn't have them yet when I served, serviced her home. So I'm going to give her that, except because she referred me and because she's here um, this one time as a special thank you because she's been fantastic and very nice to deal with. Um, I'm 
very happy to take care of her and her family. They've been very nice, so I'm going to give her a 16 ounce instead of the 8 with that uh, referral card. wipe my feet before I touch their final surface when possible. This room's a little dark. It isn't. I don't see a chain to pull on the thing to make the light come on. Bear with me in this room. There was a little red spot up against the baseboard, and that came out, so I was happy about that. carpet here. Once again, um, that popped out. Let's check. Yep, carpet is soft again. Nothing harmed into it, so awesome. Love it when that stuff comes out. Yes, true last and final portion of this video. I'm gonna do the filter reveal here for this past job. I changed it out from my first one to this one, so this is just this job. So as you can see down there, you can see the opening to the back of the left-hand side part but you see all this debris and stuff that was embedded into the carpet. So I still got that out. So that would what would be normally in the basket that's in the next to the vans or the carpet machines um, set up. But because I have this filter, I I no longer have to clean that out. So I just pop this open, pull this off, and toss it, and I'm done. Put a new one on. So that is actually a little bit faster than just cleaning out your filter that's in the machine. So, and then that uh, reduces me having to rinse out my waste tank as often, because I don't have all this debris that gets caked in the side and the bottom. Um, this catches all, all of it. So big positive big positive so that's why I love this thing um, so yeah that's it for today thank you guys so much for watching leave me a comment down below give me a thumbs up appreciate you guys